Good morning to you all. I'm Renee Francoeur with Cabinet Communications, and I'll be your moderator for today's COVID-19 update. We are joined today by the Minister of Health and Social Services, Tracy Ann McPhee, and the Acting Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Catherine Elliott. Closed captioning is provided by National Closed Captioning. Thank you to Mary Thiessen for, for providing our ASL interpretation, and to André Boussier for providing our French translation. Following the remarks from our speakers, we will go to the media present in the room and then on to the phone lines for a round of questions. I'll call you by name and you will each have two questions. Before we begin with our speakers, I would like to verify that everyone can hear us. If any of the reporters are having problems, please email ecoinfo at yukon.ca. I will now hand it over to the Minister of Health and Social Services. Thanks very much, Renee. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. It's great to be here uh, with Dr. Elliott on the traditional territory of the Kwan Lundan First Nation and the Ta'an Kwachan Council. Thank you to everyone for listening and for staying up to date on the current COVID-19 situation in the territory. As some of you may be aware, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization has provided new recommendations regarding vaccines and booster shots. Starting today, People in Whitehorse aged 18 and older will be able to book appointments to get their booster shots at the Whitehorse Vaccine Clinic. In communities, some booster clinics are now open for people aged 18 and older, and more clinics will be added in the coming weeks. All Yukoners aged age 18 and over who are eligible to get a booster, meaning it has been at least six months since their second shot, should be able to receive one before the end of January. We are truly in a fortunate position to begin offering boosters for all adults. Our territory was among the first prioritized during the early stages of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout here in Canada. Many Yukoners had their second shot in the spring before much of the rest of Canada even had access to their first shot. Vaccination remains our best protection, and I strongly urge all eligible Yukoners to get vaccinated and to get a booster shot once you are eligible. You can find clinic information and book your shots online at yukon.ca slash this is our shot. Or you can also call the COVID-19 info line for information on clinic dates and times that number is 1-877-374-0425. Walk-ins will be accommodated when possible, but please note that they are not guaranteed. As our vaccine rollout continues, our priority at this time is for children to get their first doses. Clinics for our little Yukoners aged 5 to 11 opened just this week and it was wonderful to see so much interest. This week's appointment slots booked up very quickly. Thank you to everyone who made an appointment for their child. Next week, which is December 13th to the 17th, based on demand, the Whitehorse Vaccine Clinic will solely be offering appointments for children aged five to 11. No appointments for adults will be offered during that time. This is so that we can ensure that we are immunizing as many children as possible. Our goal is to ensure that all children can receive their first dose before Christmas. I wanna give a big shout out to all the immunizers who have gone above and beyond for Team Yukon. Right from the onset of the vaccine rollout, they have been there, ready to pivot swiftly, remaining flexible in the face of new roles, complex questions, changing timelines, and many other unprecedented challenges. And here they are, still going strong, ready to inoculate our young Yukoners and administer another round of boosters. Their dedication is admirable. Thank you for caring about others. Thank you for your drive to protect us all. And thank you for being our helpful heroes. This holiday season, I hope we all take a page from your books and pass on the outstanding level of goodwill. 
Last week, the new vaccine requirements for employment came into force here in the Territory. I wanted to provide an update on the number of staff impacted by this public health measure. As of yesterday, 94.2% of employees have attested to having received their first dose. Of those who have not yet attested, 1.8% are full-time employees. That's 107 individuals. The majority of those who have not yet attested are casual or on-call employees, accounting for 3.3% of our workforce. The numbers change every day as more attestations continue to come in and employees choose to get vaccinated. Thank you to everyone who has helped to keep our workplaces safe. We appreciate you paving the way, along with other public servants and healthcare workers across the country in this new world in which we learn to safely live with COVID-19. Before I pass it over to Dr. Elliott to provide an overview of the territory's scene and situation, I just wanted to acknowledge that there have been a steady downward trend in active cases over the last few weeks. The public health measures we introduced last month have been effective. I wanna thank all of the Yukoners who have done their part to adjust to the new public health measures and limit the transmission. We are grateful for all of your efforts and diligence. As the Premier has said, we're all in this together and we will get through this together. Please take care of yourselves and be kind. Thank you. Thank you, Minister McPhee. And good morning, everyone. Bonjour. I'll begin with the case epidemiology. As Minister McPhee pointed out, we continue to see a downward trend in cases. There have been a total of 1,561 cases and 1,505 people have recovered from COVID-19. 14 Yukoners have died since the beginning of this pandemic of COVID-19. As of this morning, we have 44 active cases in Yukon, and over the last week, we've had an average of eight new cases a day. This is a manageable level. These numbers represent a continued stabilization in case counts. And the continued decrease in new infections every day is promising. The circuit breaker had the effect that was intended. And holding current measures now is intended to help us all have a safe holiday season. There's now a new twist in the road. As you know, on November 26, the World Health Organization designated the variant B11529 as a variant of concern called Omicron. The WHO's decision was based on the evidence that Omicron has several mutations that have an impact on how it behaves. For example, how easily it spreads. Europe has hundreds of cases in over 25 countries and there are cases on nearly every continent. Most of the cases in Canada are among travelers and their close contacts. In Canada, we're seeing Omicron spreading with an increasing number of provinces and territories having cases. Last week, I mentioned it was only a matter of time before it arrives in Yukon. So it's not surprising that this week, I'm reporting that there are two confirmed cases of Omicron here. We anticipated this, we were prepared, and this has been very well managed by the excellent staff at Yukon Communicable Disease Control, who have been with us since the beginning and continue diligently to take care of our cases as they continue to occur. The infected individuals in this situation are all taking the appropriate precautions to contain their disease and to help protect the community. This is exactly what any of us would do and what so many of us have done to protect ourselves from the spread of COVID-19. It might seem like a funny thing to say, something I might say to my children, or you might say to kindergarten class, but really the name of the game to protect ourselves from COVID is to keep our germs to ourselves. This is what these two individuals are doing, and as community members, as neighbours, as friends, they have done the right thing to protect us, and for that I'm very grateful. 
I know you all join me in wishing them a full and speedy recovery and thank them for their efforts to protect us. People might be wondering a little, wanting to know a little bit more about Omicron. The evidence is it's early days and we'll learn more as, uh, as uh, the science develops. And at this point, the evidence suggests that Omicron may be more transmissible than the Delta variant. Over time, it may well replace Delta in Canada as it has done in South Africa. For now, Delta by far remains the dominant variant in Canada. The vaccine effectiveness against Omicron is not known at this time and there's much speculation. We expect the vaccine effectiveness will hold uh, and particularly against severe illness and death. Regardless of what speculation is out there, we must follow the science on this one. This does not change the fact that the vaccines are critical to reduce severe illness and death and they are our best shot. Our vaccines are highly effective against Delta in preventing severe illness and death. And the arrival of the new variant in Yukon is a reminder of how important it is for all of us to uh, get our vaccine, uh, for our children to do so, and uh, to get boosters when we're eligible. We must also continue to practice the safe six plus one to do our part in preventing the spread of COVID-19. I'm heartened as I go out and about seeing people wearing their masks, keeping distance, being careful, uh, and washing their hands and taking care of one another. We all know that vaccination is how we're going to beat COVID-19. I wanna go through the numbers a bit and uh, say thank you to all of those people who have gotten vaccinated. 91% of Yukoners age 18 and older have now had their first shot. 87% of adult Yukoners have had their second shot. For those 12 to 17, 84% have had their first shot and 78% have had their second. Children uh, five to 10 are starting to receive their first shots and appointments are booking up quickly. It's encouraging to see so many young, young, sorry, it's encouraging to see so many young Yukoners join their parents and caregivers in getting vaccinated because it's getting those children vaccinated that will help us be even more protected as a society. This is one of the high priority areas right now for vaccination. A vaccinated population in the Yukon is growing among all age groups. Last week, I was asked a question. Among Yukoners who have contracted COVID-19, how many are vaccinated? I've been saying for several weeks that about half of the cases now we're seeing among Yukoners um, are among Yukoners who are vaccinated for COVID-19. This is true, and I'd like to take the opportunity to tell you more about this. At this point, we have nearly 80% uh, of the entire population, all age groups in Yukon, fully vaccinated. When you have such a large proportion of the population vaccinated, and they're showing the same number of infections as the much smaller proportion that are not vaccinated, you can see the vaccine is working. As we go into more severe outcomes, such as hospitalizations, we see this uh, difference get even broader. So it means that the more people that get vaccinated, the, the number of cases of COVID will go down. And because people who are unvaccinated are significantly more, sorry, people who are unvaccinated are significantly more likely to contract COVID and to get severe disease. Severe sickness and death are significantly more likely among people who contract COVID-19 or unvaccinated. This is why we see among unvaccinated people, young, healthy adults, who do uh, get quite ill, um, become hospitalized uh, and, uh, and end up in ICU and some have even died across Canada. This is preventable by getting vaccinated. So you can see that while we're seeing equal numbers of people uh, of cases among vaccinated and unvaccinated people, the unvaccinated people are contracting COVID-19 at a significantly greater rate and the risk to their health for severe illness, hospitalization and death is greater. I can't say it enough. Getting vaccinated is the most important step that any of us can take to protect ourselves and to protect the people in our community. To help with this, as Minister McPhee has just mentioned, 
Based on my recommendation, we'll be offering booster shots to people aged 18 and over beginning today. Our priority re will remain the first shots for children aged 5 to 11 for this month. So there will be limited booster appointments available in the short term. And we hope to get everyone over the age of 18 the opportunity to be, have their booster early into the new year. People aged 18 to 29 will be offered the Pfizer Coleman RT for their booster shots. This is due to an extremely rare association with heart inflammation among young adults, mainly males associated uh, more frequently with the Moderna spike vax vaccine. Adults age 30 and older will continue to be offered Moderna spike vax for their booster shot. Please also be aware that the Whitehorse Vaccine Clinic will be closed December 24th through 28th and December 31st through January 3rd. So please do book your appointment online at yukon.ca slash this is our shot. Book as soon as you can to improve your chances of getting your appointment before the end of the year. Residents and communities outside of Whitehorse can call their health centre. Again, as Minister McPhee mentioned, walk-ins will be accommodated, but it's, it, it will be accommodated when possible and not guaranteed. As you can see, we're expanding this COVID-19 vaccine campaign significantly and rapidly, and it's putting tremendous demand on the vaccination system, particularly the frontline nurses. I urge everyone to be patient, please be kind, and be thankful as we move together through this time. Yes, it's important we all get vaccinated as quickly as possible, and important that we maintain the qualities that make the Yukon the home and place that we all love to live. The warmth of our community, the support of family, friends and neighbours, the appreciation we have for all of the services we have here, for the wilderness, for nature, and for the wonderful place in which we live. Most of us are eager to get vaccinated and keep ourselves, our loved ones, and our community safe. And let's continue to do this with respect and kindness and with thanks. Shoni Tan, Genal Chich, Masi Cho. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Dr. Elliott. Thank you, Minister McVie. We will now move on to the question and answer session with media. A reminder to reporters, please identify which speaker you would like to answer your question before you start, and please also remember to mute and unmute yourselves. We'll first go to the reporters in the room, and we'll start with Luke at CKRW. Uh, thank you. I do have one question for uh, Dr. Elliot. I've had a couple parents uh, asking if there should be uh, a bit of spacing out between if, if their child has gotten COVID and when they should get their first dose for their child. Is there a certain waiting time or are they okay to just go get their vaccine right away? There's uh, The question is about whether there's a waiting time if the child has been infected with COVID uh, for having their first shot. No, there is no uh, waiting time between those two. That's the only question I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Luke. We'll now move to Anna with CBC. Hi, thank you. My question is for Dr. Elliot. So you announced today that there will be booster shots available for those between the ages of 18 and 49, but the priority is still on children. So just how many appointments are being made available in the next few weeks? Thank you. Uh, I'm not aware of the exact number of appointments uh, for, for boosters in the next coming weeks. Next week, we are focusing solely on children in Whitehorse. Uh, and this is because as a priority in terms of how best to protect the entire population, having children get their first shot is a higher priority than having uh, an, an adult get their third shot um, in terms of looking at the overall ability of COVID to spread in the community. Our aim is to have all adults have opportunity to get their, their booster shot by early in the new year. Thank okay. you. I do have another question. This is also for Dr. Elliot. So you mentioned that there's the arrival of Omicron here in the Yukon and in other jurisdictions, the provincial governments have said, you know, hold back on your plans for the holidays, don't meet up with people, so on and so forth. What are your recommendations for you, Connors, going into the holiday season? So as we enter the holiday season, uh, we have moderate levels of COVID activity already in the territory uh, with the Delta variant, and, and we have the arrival of Omicron uh, amongst two individuals. 
Um, the Omicron here is contained. Nonetheless, uh, being prudent and cautious over the holidays is a wise move. Uh, we have measures in place already, uh, limiting indoor gatherings. And, um, and we're also really um, emphasizing that people should um, take account of their own vulnerabilities and risks. So people who are older, people with chronic disease, uh, people who are pregnant, so at risk of more severe outcomes with COVID-19 are people who should be more cautious, limit their group sizes, limit their numbers, et cetera. In terms of specific holiday guidance, we'll have more information next week on that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move to the phone lines and we'll start with Haley at Yukon News. Thank you. Uh, my first question would probably be for Dr. Elliott. Um, I'm wondering what the availability is in the territory for the Janssen vaccine. Um, I know in, in British Columbia, they're offering that vaccine in you know limited doses to uh, people who've been laid off um, because they are unvaccinated. I'm wondering if a, a similar arrangement will be made in the Yukon and if you have a timeline for that. Uh, we have had... Um about 100 doses of Janssen vaccine available here in Yukon. Um, and a number of people have taken advantage of that uh, opportunity. Janssen is not an mRNA vaccine. It's not as effective as the mRNA vaccines. However, for some people, um, they find that's a more comfortable option. And, uh, and we have been able to offer that here. Um, I'm not actually aware of how many doses, if any, are, are remaining in territory. Um, and we're matching uh, what we can obtain in terms of the government allocation, the, national, the federal government allocation to the requests we have here. We were able to meet the list of people who had requested Janssen uh, with the current allocation. Thank you. Do you have a second question, Haley? Um, I do, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, it, uh, particularly the Omicron uh, variation, but also other new cases of COVID-19. I know when community transmission was high, contact tracing had kind of ceased. You know, everywhere was an opportunity to get COVID-19. I'm wondering if contact tracing has uh, resumed now. So uh, cases have stabilized at a, a new um, higher level than what we had had, for example, in the summer. So we're seeing uh, on average uh, over the course of a week, we're seeing about eight new cases a day. Uh, so what this means is that we do continue to have community transmission here in Whitehorse. It's not at the level that we were seeing before, but it continues to exist and people should continue to follow the safe six and follow guidance uh, where they are. We are continuing to do um, contact tracing in high risk settings. So those settings where people who are most vulnerable are exposed. And we are asking people to reach out to their contacts with guidance uh, based on guidance on our website uh, for people who are not in high risk settings. And we will continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I should add one thing. Um, I just do want to add that for um, the situation with uh, people who, if, if we see more people, which we likely will, uh, with uh, COVID-19 of the Omicron variant here, we are taking a more um, containment approach uh, to, to that group in order to slow the spread of Omicron into, our, um, into the territory. So the measures they will be asked to undertake are, will be more cautious um, than we would take otherwise for the Delta variant. We know eventually the, that, uh, or we expect, we never know with COVID, but we expect that Omicron uh, uh, could become a dominant variant here, and it's just about slowing that, that process at this time. Thanks. Thank you. We'll now move to Tim at the White Horse Star. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, my first question was probably uh, more for Dr. Elliott. <clears throat> you mentioned that the uh, circuit breaker effect of the state of emergency seems to be working and uh, it's going to persist for a while. When do you plan on uh, seeing the state of emergency or recommending that it end sometime after New Year's? So um, the uh, early, uh, early to mid-November, uh, when we announced the circuit breaker measures, uh, we announced very stringent measures and we held those measures uh, until they were lifted last week. Um, uh, uh, many of the most stringent measures were lifted last week. At this point, we continue to have limits on group size, um, proof of vaccination, the vaccine mandates, uh, and um, and a couple uh, mandatory masking in public spaces, um, et cetera. Uh, 
uh, and we expect to continue this through the holiday season in order to uh, to have a safe holiday season. We'll reassess in January. We'll know more about the Omicron variant at that time, and we'll also have a better sense of the impact of holidays, uh, the amount of mixing, what people do over the holidays, the amount of mixing uh, with uh, people um, both from other places, you know, uh, we all like to travel, visit our family, et cetera, or have family come here. Uh, the, the impact of that it will be borne out in early January. We'll be able to assess uh, what measures we need to continue to use uh, in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Tim, do you have a second question? I do. Again, this would be for Dr. Elliott. Just wondering if you can give us any more information on where these two Omicron cases are located and what more stringent containment methods are being used or recommended. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, so if we think back to when we first had COVID-19 coming into Yukon, I can remember the early days and the, the first cases, uh, and there was a lot of concern about where people were and, and what were we doing to protect the population, et cetera. Um, you know, now we have a new variant and, and we see some of the same, uh, same patterns. Um, the, the way you might have noticed, for example, um, the federal government has put in travel restrictions for certain countries, uh, increased testing, et cetera. What, the way we're working with uh, Omicron is that uh, the, the, uh, we're tailoring the duration of um, the isolation period and how uh, the, the care with which we manage those household contacts uh, much more um, stringently. So, uh, for example, household contacts at this point are being asked to isolate um, oh, with those cases until we learn more about uh, the variant. This is a precautionary step um, to ensure uh, to to prevent the the spread into the community. So this is the type of thing that we're we're looking at. Um, these people are in Yukon. They're Yukoners. Uh, that's what I have to say about where they are. Thanks. Thank you. We'll now move to Hina with the Canadian Press. Hi, um, uh, this is for Dr. Elliot. I was wondering if you can describe the symptoms of the two people uh, and are they vaccinated and what is their age, the two people who uh, who have been identified with the Omicron variant? Yeah, thanks for the question. So um, it's one of the really important things that we do in public health is we protect people's privacy. And this has really helped people trust to come forward, uh, you know, should they uh, think that they might have been exposed to any infectious disease, whether it's uh, a COVID-19 variant or another uh, type of infectious disease. Um, and uh, and we are very grateful for people who come forward and, and those people who do the right thing. And for those reasons, we don't disclose a whole bunch of uh, confidential information. Um, what I can say is that in general, uh, these people are recovering at home uh, and we wish them a safe recovery um, so they do not have severe illness. And across uh, internationally at this point, the majority of cases of people with Omicron have mild illness as well. Um, and as we learn more, I'll be able to, um, about how, how, about this disease, uh, this variant, I'll be able to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. Hina, do you have a second question? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, to follow up on the first one, I'm not asking for any private information. I'm just asking for uh, general symptoms uh, and the age group and whether they are vaccinated. Uh, also, uh, do you think uh, uh, the infections in Yukon would be higher if there was more uh, testing uh, or uh, and more contact tracing? Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, one of the things that one of the questions that uh, many people have is if we have more testing, would we detect more people? And uh, there's a couple of ways we figured this out. One of the really key things is our percent positivity. So we watch that percent of people who have gotten tested who are positive. And, uh, and I'm happy to say that we've seen that percent positivity go down as well as the case counts go down. So that's a very good sign. So our testing rates uh, are at a moderate level at this point, um, and, uh, and our percent positivity um, is dropping. I actually don't have the exact number, but it's gone down below 10. And, uh, and we're continuing to follow this, and the trend is downwards, which is exactly what we want to see. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. We'll now move to Claudienne at Radio Canada. Oui, euh, en français, Dr. Elliot, donc me, me dire un peu la situation autour de ces deux cas de micron, euh, peut-être m'expliquer si c'est inquiétant en ce moment pour le Yukon 
et quelles sont les mesures que vous comptez mettre en place euh, pour euh, contrer euh, cette propagation du variant. So, Dr. Elliott, could you please uh, repeat in French uh, more concerning these two cases of Omicron that we have right now? Uh, what measures are in place and what do you see or what is going to be recommended to make sure that uh, the spread is contained for the Omicron virus? Oui, merci pour la question. Um, euh, le variant... Oh, une minute. OK, bon. Euh, le variant Omicron, euh, euh, c'est un nouveau variant qui est euh, déclaré par l'Organisation organi de santé du monde, un variant euh, concernant. Et ce euh, variant, euh, on... C'est... C'est tôt dans le temps d'apprendre les caractéristiques de ce variant. C'est maintenant ce qui est apparent, ce qui est apparent que c'est peut-être plus transmissible que les autres variants. Et, et, et aussi au sujet de quelle est la sévérité du, du maladie. On a beaucoup euh, au monde des, des maladies qui ne sont euh, pas sévères, mais on regarde encore euh, cette situation. Um, et aussi au sujet du euh, effective, euh, effectiveness, euh, effectivement du, du vaccination, ce qu'on ce qu sait maintenant, que, ce, um, que les, les vaccinations sont euh, très effectives euh, contre tous les variants euh, jusqu'au jour et qu'elles sont plus e euh, efficaces euh, pour euh, les, euh, les maladies sévères. Euh, 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 et ça, c'est ce, ce qu'on anticipe pour euh, Omicron, mais on euh, continue de, de suivre la le, le séance euh, au sujet de ça. Um, pour le UCON, um, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Uh, maintenant, ça veut dire qu'on uh, on reste avec les mesures qu'on a en place. On, um, on suivi um, les situations dans le, le, autour du monde et aussi au Canada. Uh, et on a des provinces qui ont uh, plusieurs uh, cas et on, uh, on voit um, uh, cette situation. Et aussi, um, on, on encourage les gens de, de suivre uh, toutes les mesures qui sont en place et ceux qui sont plus uh, vulnérables au sujet uh, à, à, à cause de l'âge ou bien des maladies chroniques uh, doivent en, encore uh, suivre leurs uh, mesures plus, um, uh, plus que les, les, les autres gens. Uh, la vaccination, c'est notre uh, meilleure uh, protection. Et, euh, et ça, on continue d'offrir euh, les vaccinations pour les enfants et bien euh, maintenant les troisième euh, booster vaccination pour ceux qui sont plus âgés de 18, 18 ans et plus. Merci. Thank you. Do you have a second question, Claudienne? Euh, oui, donc, euh, donc, euh, euh, <rire> d'abord, mais est-ce que, est que les Yukonais doivent être inquiets de l'arrivée? Ça va inquiéter l'arrivée du variant Omicron. Qu'est-ce que vous avez à dire au Yukonais? So, um, Dr. Elliott, Yukoners will be worried about the arrival of the Omicron uh, variant. So, what would be your counsel or what do you have to tell them in facing this new variant? Um, ce que je veux dire au Yukon au sujet de Omicron, c'est... Um, nous savons ce qu'il faut faire. Il faut laver les mains, porter les masques, euh, n'ayez pas euh, dans les, euh, les endroits qui sont, euh, où il y a beaucoup de monde ou bien qui sont euh, peu de ventilisation. Euh, C'est euh, ces mesures qui, que nous savons bien euh, qui sont euh, plus importantes. Le plus important mesure d'être euh, avoir la vaccination. Maintenant, c'est euh, euh, la plupart des enfants qui sont vaccinés, le plus protégé, protégé notre population est euh, en tous. 
ceux qui, ont, ceux qui sont malades, euh, euh, même si ce n'est pas sévère, si c'est un peu de euh, euh, choses au nez ou bien euh, un peu de tout, euh, il faut rester chez soi et isoler des autres gens et euh, prendre son test. Merci. Thank you. Have I missed any other reporters on the line? All right. Thank you, everyone. That now concludes our COVID-19 update for today. Stay tuned next week for uh, next week's COVID-19 update. Thank you again to all our speakers and to everyone uh, on the line and the media who joined us. Uh, stay safe and stay kind, everyone.